In a world rife with division and conflict, there's one thing we all seem to agree on, the calendar. Regardless of our beliefs or politics, we all acknowledge that the year is 2024. Or is it? According to a German historian, the year is actually 1727. He claims our calendar is a fabrication and a significant portion of the Middle Ages never happened. Sounds absurd, right? Well, he says he can prove it. Join us as we dive into the mystery of the phantom time hypothesis. In 1991, German historian Herbert Illig, along with a few colleagues, proposed a radical idea we aren't living in the 21st century. Instead, we are in the 18th century. This concept, known as the phantom time hypothesis, asserts that approximately 300 years of history were fabricated, particularly the years between 614 and 911 AD. According to Illig, these centuries were invented by the Church and the Holy Roman Emperor to manipulate the calendar. Imagine this. All the history we know about the early Middle Ages, including the reign of Charlemagne, is entirely fictional. Illig suggests that Charlemagne himself was nothing more than a propaganda tool designed to legitimize the power of the Holy Roman Empire and the Church. But why would anyone go through such trouble? According to Illig, Holy Roman Emperor Otto III and Pope Sylvester II had a vested interest in aligning their rule with the start of the new millennium. By doing so, they could reinforce their authority and prestige. To understand this better, let's look at the history of our calendar. Throughout much of history, different cultures used various calendars, often based on the sun, the moon, or the seasons. When the Romans expanded their empire, these differing calendars made commerce and governance complicated. So in 45 BCE, Julius Caesar introduced the Julian calendar, which was based on a solar year, 365.2, five days, with an extra leap day added every four years. However, this system wasn't perfect. A solar year is actually slightly shorter, approximately 365.24219 days. This discrepancy meant that the Julian calendar was losing about a day every 128 years. By the time we reached the 1500s, the calendar was noticeably out of sync with the seasons. For the church, this was a problem because Easter, which they wanted to fall on the spring equinox, was drifting earlier and earlier. To solve this, Pope Gregory XV introduced the Gregorian calendar in 1582. This calendar corrected the Julian calendar's error by shortening the year to 365.2425 days. To get the calendar back on track, 10 days were skipped. People went to bed on October 4th and woke up on October 15th. This change aligned the calendar with the equinox once again. But here's the catch. Illig pointed out that the adjustment of 10 days didn't account for all the lost time. According to his calculations, the Gregorian reform only corrected for about 1,200 years of drift, not the full 1,500 years since the Julian calendar was introduced. This discrepancy, he argued, meant that approximately 300 years were fabricated. Illig delved deeper into the historical records and found some puzzling gaps. For example, there seemed to be a dearth of records and artifacts from the years 614 to 911. The architectural styles from the year 476 were strikingly similar to those from the year 1000, suggesting minimal advancement over those centuries. In a normal progression of history, one would expect significant technological and architectural developments. Moreover, Illig noted a suspicious lack of archaeological evidence from this period, particularly in Germany. Medieval towns and settlements that should have existed between 650 and 910 
seemed to be missing. Even more intriguing, Illig claimed that Charlemagne's extensive achievements, his military conquests, legal reforms, and educational initiatives seemed too extraordinary for one man to accomplish in a single lifetime. Supporters of the phantom time hypothesis also point to discrepancies in historical documents from other cultures. For instance, they argue that Islamic record keepers might have added fictitious events and years to their own timelines, aligning with the fabricated centuries in Europe. This would mean that the Jews, Christians, and Byzantines also adjusted their calendars around the same period. Now you might be wondering about the scientific evidence. What about astronomical events? Like Halley's Comet, which we know appears every 75 to 76 years. Records of Halley's Comet sightings exist well before and throughout the so-called Phantom Time. Chinese astronomers, known for their meticulous records, documented the comet's appearances consistently, including during the disputed years. Most historians dismiss the Phantom Time hypothesis as a captivating but unfounded theory. They argue that the lack of records from the so-called Dark Ages is due to societal collapse and turmoil following the fall of the Roman Empire. This period was marked by war, famine, and a significant decline in literacy and record-keeping. As for Pope Gregory's calendar adjustment, further research revealed that his reform wasn't solely based on the Julian calendar. It also considered corrections made by the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, which had already adjusted the calendar by three days. Adding Gregory's 10-day correction accounted for the total discrepancy of 13 days, debunking Illig's claims of missing centuries. In conclusion, while the Phantom Time hypothesis makes for an intriguing story, the evidence supporting our current historical timeline remains robust. The gaps in records and artifacts from the Middle Ages are better explained by the chaos and decline of the post-Roman world rather than a grand conspiracy to fabricate time. Still, the idea that 300 years of history could be an elaborate fiction captures our imagination. It challenges us to think critically about how we understand and record history. For now, we can rest assured that we're indeed living in the 21st century. But it's always fun to entertain the mysteries of what might have been. Subscribe to Truth Revealed to stay intrigued and informed.